Okay, so now in terms of loci, we finished from helices and now we're going to move on to involutes. Involutes, there are two types. There are going to be the clockwise ones and the anti-clockwise ones. We'll be seeing what they are. Now, an involute is the locus of a point considered at the end of a taut spring being unwound from a given curve in the plane of that curve. So, let's see the first one. It's a square. Imagine you have a, a taut string around this square, right? We're going to see how it unwinds from the square. Okay? How it unwinds from it. Imagine there's a string around it, a taut string, and we're going to unwind it. Okay? So, find the involute shape outcome of the square and hexagon below. The involute of the square traveling in a clockwise motion. So, we're going to unwind the string in this sort of motion in a clockwise motion okay in that so the, sp the string will un be unwinding like this in this motion a clockwise motion if it would have been an anti-clockwise motion like it's going to be for the hexagon it would be like this you'd have to unwind like this the other way around anti-clockwise okay now, since it is a clockwise motion, okay, since it's a clockwise motion and it's going to be traveling around like this, we need lines coming out in the opposite direction. So, for example, if I have one, let's place numbers here first. I have one here, two, three, four. Okay, since the motion is clockwise, I need to take the, the lines, I need to protrude lines in an anti-clockwise motion. What do I mean? For example, 2 and 1. Let's see the side. The side is 2 and 1. Okay, I'm going to project a line from 2 towards 1, protruding to the outside. So like this, from 2. To one protruding to the outside of the square okay so from two through one protruding to the outside the lines regardless of which motion you're traveling in to project these lines you always go from the bigger number to the smaller number and then project the line even further outside okay so if it was an anti-clockwise motion, let's see here, it's anti-clockwise, so the numbers would be like this. It is still from the bigger number through the smaller number to the outside, okay? So always from the bigger to the smaller. Now, so let's protrude all the lines. Okay, from, look, from 3 to 2 and to the outside, okay? Now look, from 4 to 3 to the outside, okay? Now, in this case, we'd consider 1 to 4, okay? We have to consider 1 bigger than 4, so like this. And two to one, let's make it a little longer. Okay, so we have our lines like this. So now I'm going to take my compass. Place it on two. I always start by placing it on number two. Regardless of whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise motion, I always Regardless of whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise motion, you always first place the compass on 2. Why? Because you need to open from 2 to 1. So, you open from 2 to 1 and draw an arc. 
till you meet the line protruding from two. Okay, so you stop it here. Now you go on point three and you don't open to two now. You open till the end of the arc you have just created. So you open till here, okay? And from here you draw an arc to the line protruding from three. So you draw the arc till the line that protrudes from three, okay? Now you place your comp some point number four, open to the end of this arc and draw an arc to the line protruding from point number four. Okay, now place it on one, open to this arc and draw a new arc that will end here and on the line protruding from one and there you have the involute through clockwise motion of a square okay that is how the string unwinds now you can try the rest on your own pay attention whether they are clockwise motion or anti-clockwise motion but the method of which we create the involutes is done exactly the same for regardless of which motion.